Hey guys, uh, cheers. Another coffee morning. What kind of coffee do I drink? I drink hazelnut coffee, black. So, uh, anyway. Question I get often put to me. When do you know that you're going to be ready as a freelance web developer or web designer? When do you know that you have enough skills to get into the marketplace to be able to compete? Well, it's part of a process. There's no particular uh, set of code that you need to know or certain frameworks you need to know. That's not how that's not how it works because a big part about being a successful web developer, a coder, web designer, etc., is being able to do a whole bunch of different things that not that are not necessarily related to coding specifically. It has to do with I'll give you some examples. Having good UX skill sets. UX is short for user experience. To be able to manage a project. To understand things that surround putting on a website like hosting and uh, a little bit of SEO maybe for a lot of sites, being able to integrate social uh, media and choosing the right social media depending on the type of business that you're putting a site up for, etc., uh, etc. Et it's all these things that are not necessarily, necessarily directly related to coding that uh, freelance developers especially have to know. Now, what's the quickest way to learn how to become a professional developer? Is it working for somebody or working on your own? I think for uh, baseline, general purpose, web development and design, working on your own and getting clients and working through the process of building actual projects for clients is going to get your skill level much higher, much quicker. Because when you work for somebody, you're typically confined to a very particular subset of, of things that you have to do. So you may be hired specifically to, to write some back-end code uh, in a, maybe a certain module, whereas if you're doing your own, your own projects or freelance projects, you have to do everything. You have to, start, you have to bid on it. You have to bid on the project. You have to cost it out. You have to communicate with the client. You have to interact with your client. You have to, of course, do the web. You have to do the front end and the back end. You have to organize all these things that you wouldn't have to do normally working for a company. On the flip side, when you're working for a company, if you're working at a good company, you're going to learn how they've, over time, assuming it's a company with at least a few people on staff, you're going to learn how, over time, how uh, they manage their own projects and you're going to be learning uh, their processes and they may be very good I mean it may not be too good but they're probably pretty good if they're hiring you and they're making money so there's pros and cons to everything it really depends on what you like uh, to do how you like to learn uh, these days with the free flow of information where you can access channels like mine where uh, you can ask questions, you can get answers, you can go check out other people's questions and answers. Like, you know, for a code specific, exa for example, you go to Stack Overflow for that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's this, there's this, there, there is just such a free flow of information that having to go to uh, work for somebody or go to a huge institution necessarily is not necessarily uh, required. It also depends on the type of learning that you like to do. Everybody is different. Some people need and want that structured environment. So a lot of people, a lot of schools use Studio Web. Uh, so a lot of, you know, whether it be college and high school students um, and adult students. And uh, that's cool because some people prefer that structure. They want to work with a classroom. They want to work with a group of people. And other people, other people are more comfortable doing their own thing. If your eventual goal is to be an entrepreneur, then you definitely want to get into the whole freelance thing. You step, definitely want to start doing your, home, your own projects from start to finish. If you're not interested in being an entrepreneur, uh, then you can go work for someone. You can do very, 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 very well there as well. So getting back to your original question, how do you know when you're ready? Well, you know when you're ready when you've done a couple of projects, or at least one, where you've taken it from start to finish. And in my upcoming freelancing course, yes, I gotta shamelessly self-promote sometimes. 
in my upcoming freelancing course, will be out in a few days, if it's not already out now by the time you're watching this, I talk, I teach about that. I, I give you the step-by-step -step process. And here's the uh, Reader's Digest version. Here's the short version of how to uh, know when you're ready. Once you have your basic skills, your foundational skills, so let's say it's the web stack, it's HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, then uh, I recommend a server-side language like PHP, like uh, Python maybe on the back end, or uh, JavaScript would be preferable. My two top choices for back end coding, meaning server-side coding. If you don't know what this is, you got to do my web stack course or some web stack course, is uh, JavaScript and PHP. At this time, generally speaking, although depending on where you live, depending on the type of work you want to do, different languages will be uh, more advantageous. Anyhow, once you have your basic skills, then you go in, you have to go out there and start getting some real jobs, real world jobs, not projects that you find online, not project-based courses, actual real jobs. Because remember, a lot about being a professional developer is developing professional skills, professional relationship building skills, where you interact with the client, etc. So I won't go into any more detail here in this vlog, but I hope this is helpful. Yes, I decided uh, I got a pretty good response to my last vlog in a car where I was walking around stuff a bit, driving around. And I do intend to do that. I do intend to do that. Not today, but I'm not sure how often I'm going to do it. Maybe once a week. I want to see if I can make it, you know, an interesting vlog. So I'm going to watch. Okay, somebody's about to back into me. Don't do it. Okay, good. All right. All right, so uh, that's it. So I will see you, um, you'll see me in the next vlog and let me know uh, down below any questions, any comments, if anything was unclear. I am more than happy to help. As some of you may know, uh, I do this because it's in the blood. It's in the blood. My father was a teacher. Many of my aunts and uncles are teachers. About four or five of my cousins our teachers, full-time teachers. Uh, my brother Todd, and uh, of course I teach. And uh, so yeah, even though I've been an entrepreneur since I've been 18, I find it's just kind of weird. It's just, I guess I just, it's kind of in the breeding, I guess. I, I'm just, for me to teach and to, to simplify and to convey information to people and to point people in the right direction is just second nature to me, I suppose. And uh, I've had very good mentors, friends, um, people who have, you know, people who are 50, 100 million plus. They pointed me in the right direction in terms of how to proceed in my life. And so I'm just returning uh, the favor through uh, these videos. Although I've had several uh, people who I've mentored and they've gone on to be successful. And actually, I have one of the guys, we just haven't had a chance. He has a pretty successful uh, educational company startup with does uh, AI. And he's supposed to come in and we're supposed to chat about it. And he, right out of school, he came, started working for me. And I trained him up in the ways of the web and coding. And uh, now he's a CTO of a company. And they've had raised millions of dollars in funding. And uh, they're doing pretty good. They're doing pretty good. All right, that's it for now. Bye-bye.